Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. We are here in an alternative venue today because I'm showing you a long gun. So, sometime during the early years of the Depression, Roy Halley from Iowa got himself a Hercules 16 gauge shotgun from Montgomery Ward. And one can only imagine that he used it for many years because when I saw it at Pinto's, it was very well worn and slightly off face. And it was listed as a parts gun for $40. And normally this is not a firearm that would have been of great interest to me. I have shotguns and 16 gauge is sometimes inconvenient in this day and age. But I looked at it quite closely because they also had a table with a bunch of muzzle loader barrels on it at modest prices. And one of them, a 7 8 inch octagonal barrel, was in 45 caliber. And I thought to myself, I happen to have a 45 Colt chamber reamer in my shop. And I hatched a cunning plan. So, um, I procured the shotgun and the barrel for the princely sum of $97, including tax, out the door and took them home into my shop. And I cut a 16 and a half inch section of the barrel, carefully measured the 16 gauge chamber and threw the chunk of barrel on my lathe and turned down a section of one end to fit in the chamber of the shotgun which I then cut off at the beginning of the chamber, fixed the barrel into it and discovered that even with a 16 and a half inch barrel, the 7 8 inch, um, the 7 8 inch octagonal barrel was just a little too front end. So I pulled it back out, chucked it up in the vise again and turned it down to round with a slight taper. And then I affixed a front sight and eventually I affixed a rear sight and I had this, a 45 Colt carbine, weighing about six pounds, 16 and a half inch barrel, homemade front sight, homemade old fashioned style rear sight. And um, it works. Now I wasn't sure it would honestly, because the muzzle loading barrel was set up for round ball which means it has about a one in 40 rifling twist, which I wasn't sure at all was going to work with conical lead bullets, but what the hell, gave it a shot. And it works, at least with shorter bullets in the 200 grain range. 270 grain bullet hit about a foot from point of aim at 20 yards and keyholed rather badly. So I'll have to do some experimentation to find out what works best, but it appears that at least out to 20 yards, 200 grain bullets work just fine. So, this is a handy little thing. These were made for Montgomery Wards by Stevens Company, who called it the Hercules. Same as Montgomery Wards did. Operation is quite simple. You work this lever on the tang, crack it open, the ejector pops out, Take a cartridge in and close it, and then cock the hammer and you're ready to go. The hammer floats and cannot strike the firing pin unless the trigger is fully pulled. So it is quite safe. You can carry around chambered. And um, I have absolutely no use for this, but it's cool. And uh, I can't really show you the process because YouTube doesn't like that because that's people making ghost guns to commit anus crimes with. Trust me. But I can show you some of the details. Um, the adjustable rear sight is adjustable for elevation only and it's shooting quite high right now because the bead on the front sight that I carefully affixed left. I'll have to replace it. Um, however, it did shoot a one hole group at 10 yards offhand. One hole if it weren't for the inevitable flyer because 
me. But uh, really, I'm quite pleased with the way it's coming out, and it's been a lot of fun. Now, to dismantle the gun, you simply pull down on the front of the foregrip, and there's a spring-loaded lever that engages this piece to lock it into place. And of course, I had to remove this piece from the 16-inch or the 16-gauge shotgun barrel and mount it on the 45 caliber barrel, uh, which I did by filing on a flat and silver soldering in place, which works quite well. Then you simply open it and you can pull the barrel right off at that point. As you can see, here is the ejector. This lever under here allows it to release, which will happily kick an expended cartridge into the next county. Naturally, I had to modify the ejector by affixing a plate to it so that it would actually function and eject the 45 cold. Now, I did something to it. As you can see, it's not exactly centered on the bore. I, the place where it engages, I filed a bit so that it would be off center when it was fully open so that it will retain the expended cartridges as you saw in the video because 45 brass is expensive and I didn't want them flying into the next county. In fact, if I open this with it in line with my face, it will shoot me in the forehead with brass. No, thank you. <laughs> but it's just a fun little project. I wondered if I could do it. I wondered if it would work if I did because of that whole rifling thing. But uh, it's just a neat little gun. It's very handy. And if it's taken down, I can put the mechanism in the barrel separately into my shooting bag. So it's very easy to take to a rifle range or where is the only place I've shot it so far, the pistol range. And um, an interesting note, I wanted to tighten up the stock. And to do that, you remove the butt plate, held in place by a couple of wood screws. And then there is a long half inch diameter or so hole cut through to where the screw head, or the bolt head is. In that was something unexpected. There was a rolled up piece of paper inside that hole, which is how I know that this was Roy E. Halley's gun, because that piece of paper turned out to be his Iowa resident fishing and hunting license, which expired in 1933. So it was a cool bit of history to go along with this project. And I'm really pleased to have found this. And uh, it's just a little interesting bit of history that goes along with this whole project. So hopefully somewhere Roy is looking down going, what the hell did you do to my shotgun? Actually, I hope he's thinking it's kind of neat that somebody did something with it other than turning it into scrap. So what am I going to do with this? I have no idea. It's just one of those impulses. I thought, that sounds cool. Can I? Let's find out. And, um, you know, with the right bullet, it'd be quite adequate for our local black-tailed deer. And I do tend to hunt in venues where it's all very short range. So if the accuracy proves out at 50 to 100 yards, there is every chance that this will be back in the field to see deer and kill them. Um, I did refinish the wood, but I did not sand it down enough to remove the original marks of use because to me, those are character and it's cool to have them. So anyway, that was my little project for last month and uh, I'm very happy with the way it came out and I'm very interested to see how things go from here. Now, that $97 was kindly provided by my supporters from Patri Patreon. Patreon. And um, it, 
this all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. If you would like to join my supporters on Patreon, there is a link in the description below. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors who have helped with contributions of ammunition, odd bits of this and that, guns to show you and talk to you about, etc. And they are all very much appreciated as well. So I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.